Hi everybody, this is David Farmer again, and I wanted to talk a little bit about Elastic Audio. Um, I've been using this about a year, and I think it's a really great tool. It's uh, not perfect, but it's uh, really cool. So first of all, let me just show you my session here. I've got some sounds pulled in. I have no idea what this is going to turn out to sound like, but I just wanted to do a quick demo. Um, so I have five audio tracks. They're all normal audio tracks. Now what I'll do, I do anyway, is I choose, I leave one track uh, regular and I make the others uh, elastic. So I select these and I come over, I'm in uh, medium height in Pro Tools. I do option shift, I select this here and do polyphonic. Polyphonic is my preferred choice. And that'll make these four tracks elastic. Now I like to visualize them. So I bring up the color palette. The track is still selected. So now I go tracks and I choose a color for those. I like to use a light blue. I don't know why, but I guess it just tends to pop out. So now I can see that these four tracks are elastic and this one is not. Now, let me just quickly point out three things that um, you need to know about Elastic Audio. Number one, you cannot spot using SoundMiner or you know Snapper or something like that, you cannot spot a file to a stereo track that's elastic. So that's what, one of the reasons I leave one track um, not elastic. Um, number two, you cannot do an audio suite overwrite audio on an elastic track. So if you want to normalize or something like that, you need to have that on a, on a regular track. And third, and most importantly, uh, don't miss this one, fades are not supported on elastic tracks. Pro Tools DigiDesign still lets us use them, which is great because most of the time they still work. But if you process too far, you might get a click or pop in your sound. And the only way to get rid of it at that point is to render it, render the entire thing. You, it's not a matter of delete the fade and recreate the fade. That doesn't really work. I've never had it work. So be aware that fades are not supported. So I would never, at this point anyway, this is on 8.04, I think, I would never ship a session to, the, to a mix stage that's delivering, the, you know, hitting, hitting the desk with elastic audio tracks. I would always render them first. Um, so let me just go ahead and start uh, giving you a little demo here. So I'm going to bring, let me mute all these first, because I'm going to keep copies of them up here. Um, I'm going to bring this track. This is a, a, a wish, the same wish I used of, of Charles Deenan's in the Glide video. So let me just play that. Okay, so that's, un, we haven't done anything to that yet. Now this is on an elastic track. Now the really cool thing that you want to keep your eye out for is this, uh, window called elastic properties under the region menu elastic properties now, this is a real this is a region based uh, sort of display and a way of controlling individual regions so i can now go in here select this region and type in say minus five and that will pitch that in in real time it'll pitch that minus five it can also go up You know, your mileage may vary. Some sounds um, will process better than others. I think you can go as far as like minus 24, which is ridiculous. But anyway, you can do that there. You can lower the gain up to 6 dB. You cannot go up. You can't raise the level, but you can go down. You can also adjust the overall time expansion or, you know, or shortening of the file just by dragging in this window. You don't even have to get into the warp markers and things like that. But, whoops. I'm getting away from me there. Okay, 100, okay. So now let me show you where we start to manipulate the file using the warp markers. You can go over here to this pull down menu and choose warp. And that'll give you a bunch of uh, warp markers, or these are actually analysis markers at this point. They really don't mean much to us. We can double click them and create a, that's, this is the point we'll, we'll drag around. We really need sort of two of them so that, so that they uh, anchor. But so what I did there, sorry, I'm moving too fast. I held down control and I clicked in there and that created a warp marker that I can then, now that I can move around. So that will, this, this anchor will be stationary while I'm moving this one. 
and also the point between here and the end or the next point will not move either that will all of this audio is unchanged the only thing we're doing is we're moving things in between those two points so pro tools will complain once we've stretched it too far it'll turn red but i've found this or or too short it will it will turn red but i've found that to be you know, almost useless. It's sometimes things sound fine when they're red, and sometimes they sound pretty, pretty munched up, pretty terrible way before it reaches the red. So I don't know. That's a that's a visual indicator, but a, I really haven't had it be that useful. So um, anyway, let me just uh, shorten this whoosh. But that only shortened the apex of it. The in and the out are still long. Did you remember how it sounded before? something like something like that so i can go in here and shorten this bit yeah you hear how it got garbled right there anyhow this is sort of uh this is sort of how it, it would, how it works um the cool thing about it is no matter how much you drag these things around you're working on you know you're working real time real real time uh, processing so you're not processing a processed file you know if you use an audio suite plugin to do time you know compression or expansion you have to render it which means it's been processed and if you want to change it again you're processing a file that's processed no matter how many times i move this around it's still referencing the original audio underneath so you can that that opens up a whole new door about how we use this stuff you can't do cool things like you can with um, the plugins like Pitch and Time, which is like to draw a uh, a pitch map. You know where it will will like a, using a pitch wheel. You know vary speed sort of thing where you can go real. You know you can't do that with this. You can lower the overall pitch, um, but that's you can that's the only thing you can do. You can't do performance moves like real that kind of thing. Um, so let's see. Let me go ahead and bring in something else down here. We're going to just mess around. I have no idea what this is going to sound like. But let me bring in this file. I think this is a tiger growl. We're just going to, I'm going to show you how we match things up. This is a tiger growl. Solo that. And this is a thunder crack, I believe. All right, so this is going to be you know, this would actually be very cool for ADR, but uh, it's also which works well for sound effects. Let me sh let's look at these waveforms, these modulations. Let me increase the size of that a little bit. So now we're going to just use Elastic Audio to sort of line up these mods. I have no idea what it's going to sound like, but anyway, it'll show you what we're doing. So my shortcut, instead of going over here to waveform and going to warp marker, is actually a keyboard shortcut, which is command, control, left arrow. And that brings up warp marker. So now, without even listening to this, I'm going to just line these up, and we'll see how it turns out. But I'm going to lock this down. I'm going to keep. I want to keep this section. I want to keep the area sort of between the sounds unchanged, and sort of crunch this up so these mods line up a little bit. And now I'm going to make another marker here. Drag this forward. Uh, let's see what that sounds like so far. Okay, not what good, not sure what this sound is good for, but it gives a little idea. Let me crunch this up a little more. We'll bring this forward. And now what we'll do is we have this long tail at this tiger growl. It sort of fades out over time, and so does the thunder crack. So what I want to do is sort of pick this point and this point to sort of line up. So I'm going to make a marker here. That's control clicking to make the marker. Then I just drag it over like that. So we sort of see how this is lining up. Let's see what that sounds like. If I really wanted to keep going with it, I could. I could make this marker line up at the end there. Anyway, that gives you an idea of what you can do. Um, you know, we, let's go ahead and lower the pitch of this just for, for grins. Or what we could do is keep everything at this pitch. We could split the region here. 
and pitch only the back half. So let's go minus five. Now we see, look at this, this says minus five, that's this region. Now if I select to this region, this value is back to zero because remember this elastic properties is region based. Anyway, pretty cool, huh? Um, so what I would do before I deliver this session to a mix is I would select all the elastic audio tracks again, and I would go back to my elastic chooser, whatever this is, whatever you call this thing, this pull down menu, option shift, and I would select none to disable elastic audio. It'll give me this window and I will say commit. And what that will do is it will render those files on that track. So now you don't have to worry about any sort of artifacts that that may, you know, the Elastic Audio may be introducing. So you, everything should hit the desk fine without any trouble. Um, the other way you could do it, let me undo that. The other way you can render files, let me just make a copy of this real quick and show you, is you can drag, let's say that this one was, we put a fade on here and it had some sort of glitch. You know, let's say that this is popping. We can also drag that up to our our track that's not elastic, and that will render that that as well. Because sometimes you may not want to want to choose the entire. Let's say this this track here, track two. We wanted to render that, and it says commit. You may only want to render one thing, not the entire track. So in order to do an individual event, you would just drag that event onto a track that's not elastic, and there you go. So let's see. I hope I covered everything. If not, I will. I will um, make an addendum to this. But that's Elastic Audio, and I hope you like it. Okay, thanks. Bye.